Now we're gonna record to the Task Game 388. We're gonna record a country song and talk about not only the recording but the music side, because some of y'all might be interested. First step is the metronome. Firing up the Task Game 388. Woo! I think I wanna rewind and use an old piece of tape. Decided that's dumb, I'm gonna use a fresh piece of tape. First thing I'm doing here is arming tracks five and six. And then what you gotta do on this machine is hard pan tracks, assign them if you don't want bleed. So I like to separate my kick and my snare. Give it all the tap tap, see if it's if it's working. And it's not, so something's wrong. I need to put these on mic and then I should see something. Yeah. I hate this kick sound right now. You'll notice that the snare is sometimes peaking and the kick is never peaking because I don't like that farty sound. Alright! I'm gonna improvise this song. I have no idea what that was. And as usual, it's a sloppy mess. There's no heat because I don't want the heat sound to get into the recording, so I'm freezing my b off, but whatever, let's just keep going because I gotta teach lessons in 90 minutes. Color coded cables, that would really help. This one is blue, 1960s Vibrolux original. It's good for country. In this instance, since I am going to tape, I'm gonna just track with the built in reverb because I like reverb. So, for this type of song, a turtle shell color pick gets the best sound. Orange will be used on the acoustic. Are you into pedals? MXR Dynacomp, Timmy pedal. I always say mild drive sound, but normal people say edge of breakup. I set these guys up pretty subtle, just barely compressed. This guy is pretty tame. I have a boo boo on my finger. I think I'm going deaf. What I've been doing lately is DBX on tracks one through four. Things that don't need DBX go on tracks five, six, seven, eight, like bass and drums. Track one is armed. DBX is on. So now I'm gonna double that and I think I'm gonna work backwards. I have like the, the arrangement. That was crappy too. Let's do the bass now. It needs some more juice. I might pump it up with some pedals. To give the bass more boost, I'm gonna use the divided by 13 switch hazel. Not only a really nice clean boost, but it's got like a tuner out and it's got, you know, AB switching so you could send it to different outputs, which is handy. Slapping the bass. What I'm gonna do is plug my tone beast into the 388 to record my acoustic guitar. I went back here and took the output from the tone beast into line in on the 388. Now I should have phantom power on my 388. For this old doggy, we need an orange pick. Whoa. The track gets a little boring, so I'm gonna bring in the acoustic on like the second burst. Nothing's telling me that this is the world's best mix, but I just wanna show you some of the things I'm doing off the bat. I'm taking down the low lows on a lot of these different things because it just tightens up your mix to let your bass and your kick live down there. I'm rolling off the highs from the kick because it reduces the noise a lot and I don't really get a lot of high end on here anyhow. On this acoustic, the highs are boosted a little bit because I'm trying to recover what I lost with DBX. We're about to attempt this live mix. I want to start out with the acoustic down and the electric guitar down. Something's wrong so that left is right and right is left and it's occurred to me how deaf I am in one of my ears. When you listen to your mix backwards, you're like, whoa, this one thing is too loud on this side. I'm actually okay with this mix. It's not like perfect. It's fine. It's fine. It sounds fine. It's not perfect. Like, the guitars are way too loud. Some of you guitar players might enjoy if I broke down some of the things that are happening on this song. One of the things is a banjo roll. That's the 
same thing over and over. I just changed my notes in my left hand. So basically, theory-wise, this is just, I'm just outlining a G dominant chord because I got a G and a flat seven. And then over here, the fifth, and that's a G, so it's like this. But I don't have to play the root, right? I can just have this in the bass. So I have that going on. And then over here, I change this to an E, which is the second fret of the D string. So that's kind of like a C9. All right. And then for my D chord, I'm playing the fourth fret of the D string. Open sound with that open G string. That's the same idea. And the banjo roll kind of goes like this. It's, I got my pick on the D string, middle finger on the G string, and my ring finger on the B string. And they, they stay there. That's the first half. And then, so think of it just like two pieces. We've got the first half. Do that twice. And then you end it with pick, ring, pick, middle, I think. So that was like the main gist of it. There's another banjo roll happening in the middle where I'm playing kind of a combination of sixths and thirds. So there was a like a G major chord, for example, like this. And those are sixths and thirds, because on top I have these thirds. Right, that outlines a G major chord. And then in the interior you have sixth. So I'm going from the C shape of G to the A shape of G. And if you do this bucket of fish roll, like pukitipap, you can put them together. Pick on the D string, middle finger on the B string, ring finger on the high E string. So as long as you maintain this shape, you can go, and I think there was a D at the end and I just went, I just played sixth and thirds in reverse like this. Because over here, these are your thirds for D major. That's, a, that's like a dominant sound landing on G. So if you combine that with a six on the bottom, put it all together. And then a lot of it was just kind of like taking advantage of these open strings. So if you're on a G major chord, you can get a country sound by just playing it in the back of your guitar and doubling on these open strings. So if I have a G major chord, I can slide into this G on the D string while simultaneously playing this open G string. So If the chords of your song have a G major or a D major or an A, you can find those situations where there's an open string and you can do that double thing, the unison. Right, that's a G, this is a D. This would be an A. But those things don't have to be always the root of your chord. Like if you have like an A major chord, you can do this G thing, because G is the flat seven in the key of A. So you can go like, So it's just a, an easy way to sound country and take advantage of that. This little lick, it's like a pedal steel lick I did in two different ways. So this is a C major chord. And everybody kind of knows this country pedal steel lick. If you don't, you should learn it. It's just out of C major pentatonic. And you can just go like this. Because you're really outlining a C major chord when you do that. You go from the second to the third. And you can take these two notes and put them down here and play that same lick. It's the same lick. Hope that shed some light and you found it interesting. And if you're a complete beginner, all you really need to do to play country is to just play the pentatonic of every chord as it goes by. You know, use your bridge pickup, get a twangy sound, play back here. Check out the Country Guitar Cookbook, which is my video tutorial series all about a deep dive into country guitar. Definitely check that out if you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks so much.